I'm just tracking along here, and I got to a point where this line 90s, and I started digging through the bushes. Where was it? Right here. Talk about an above ground junction box. I wonder if this is where the doubler I've been looking for is. I'll check back in a minute. I'm actually out on this property to look for a valve that controls that area that is stuck open right now. And as I was looking for it, I ended up finding this. Wow. Look at it in all of its glory. Well, in other news, we had four valves running under zone 17, which told me that there was a doubler installed somewhere on the property. We found all four of those valves and did not find a doubler at any of those locations, which told me that we would eventually find a doubler at a location like this. And sure enough, there she is, found that doubler. Didn't find the valve I'm looking for yet, but it's always nice to find something else you were looking for before. Now I know where it's at. That's where I found that cluster F of wires. And there's my valve. That sweet, sweet noise. Now, let's see what's wrong with it. And it's in a super fun location. Probably forgot to point out that there's a palm tree literally right next to this valve so it's making it a little bit hard to dig it up it's a good thing that i plan on rebuilding this valve and not cutting it out and putting it back in but we're not going to leave it in that tiny little valve box we're definitely going to be putting it in a proper size valve box when we're done but in order to rebuild it we're going to have to expose it and i'm going to have to dig through a lot more tree roots to get there bear with me just wanted to stop and show that this tree is fighting me. I've dug it up on all of the other sides and I tried to pull the valve box out and it just doesn't want to let it go. I might have to break the valve box to get it out, but remember we're putting a new valve box in anyway, so that doesn't matter. But damn, this sucker's fighting me. Nope, still fighting. There we go. And I got it out in one piece. All right, now we got to get the dirt clump out from around the valve, clean this up a bit so I can actually work on it. All right, all exposed. Now it's just time to take it apart and put these parts in it. Let's do that. Before I go and take that valve apart, I wanna dismantle the brand new valve so that I have it ready to go once I get this valve taken apart. One of the parts that gets missed when people rebuild valves is this collar right here, the seat of the valve. This needs to go in so that the bottom of the diaphragm right here will interact with this closing the valve. In some situations, this collar is the reason why the valve won't close. You really haven't rebuilt the whole valve unless you take all of the parts that are removable and take them out of the old valve and put all of those removable parts into the new valve, including this collar. I won't be using the bottom half of this valve. I may be using even this O-ring right here, depending on the way that that one looks when I pull it out. Let's go ahead and take that one apart next, and then we'll be able to put all of the parts from this valve in that one. In a lot of cases, rebuilding the valve is the best option. And in this case, it's definitely the best option because it's right next to a tree. And in order for me to dig up the pipes to be able to cut the actual valve out and plumb in a new valve would take considerably more time. And I chance harming the tree trying to do it because I would have to dig right past the bottom of this tree in an effort not to kill the tree and to get the valve working again the way it should be as quickly as possible. Rebuilding the valve is the solution here. Let me continue doing this. I have to take this valve apart so we can put these parts back in them. You can't see it, but the valve is installed. In this case, I had two options. I could either wait for the water to drain out and have a dry hole to work out of, but that would have taken several hours. This is a very large system. Instead, I decided to work underwater. I'm not able to see underwater because that water is dirty, so I have to work with my hands. And the way I did that in this case is I set the other valve right in front of me so I could see where the solenoid port was. And then down here, I just felt around until I could feel the solenoid port and when I put the top and everything together, I just lined up the solenoid port with the solenoid port on the top of the valve. And bada bing, bada boom. As long as you have 
the collar, the diaphragm, and the spring inside, you're good to go. Put it all back together, tighten it up, fire it up. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here. Just as soon as I tighten those bolts up, get the water out of the hole and put the new box right there. Let's get that done. All right, and with that, we'll move on to the next valve at the back of the property. That one's done. I don't know, for some weird reason, I want spaghetti for dinner tonight. This morning, we get to tackle the spaghetti ball. This is gonna be fun. I actually like doing stuff like this. This is going to involve a lot of troubleshooting and cleanup. Looking at this rat's nest is going to upset most people, so let's get it fixed. So somewhere in these bushes is that. First things first, we're gonna clean up these bushes around here so we can get to the box that all that is coming out of. And then we're going to clean all of that up and put all new connections. We meet again. This is the junction box I was working on. And you can tell I'm not done in here because obviously. And this is the doubler we're trying to get rid of. We're gonna go through this box. We're looking for a blue wire because that's the wire color that I saw over there that the wire was connected to. I might end up taking this whole box apart, but let's just see if one of these blue wires lights up immediately in here. Nope, not that easy. So let's take these out. Ooh. Nope, let's take these out and see where that signal is gonna go. I'll save you all the trouble of me looking through all these wires for the right one. It was the blue one right here. We got one wire. Now we got to repeat this process two more times so that we can get rid of that doubler device right there. Oh yeah, the solenoid. I should probably show you guys what I'm using that for. There's the common wire connected to one side of the solenoid. Here's the wire I identified with my low voltage pen and the final diagnosis to make sure that this wire will work for me is connecting that solenoid. If it pops that solenoid like it is, then it's likely going to pop the solenoid in the field that that doubler is connected to. All right, I'm gonna go find these other three wires. Y'all have a great day. Now I get to stuff that back into the box, but that's coming with me. It's freaking popcorn dry out here. I got this irrigation zone coming up now. We'll water a few of these really hot areas as we work on other things. Well, that was a total success. Almost breaking my ankle, but that's not what I was talking about. We identified three good wires over there, so we were able to remove the doubler, the band-aid. It's out. Now, those are four separate zones. Zones 17, 28, 29, and 30, which will get mixed back into the controller when I rewire everything. All right, let's go get our equipment and move on to the next one.